Good day, folks. This is Bob with news, with views, and as expected and as predicted, nothing really happened at the talks between uh, the farmers and the government, just like nothing is happening between talks between India and China. Well, I guess they're trying to, the Indian government thinks that the, what they're doing in the Chinese model, uh, Chinese border successfully, is probably going to work in this particular environment. And I guess they're using uh, the old Chanakya uh, format of Dand, Dand, Bhed, Bhav, and whatever that goes with it. But here I'd like to point out, it's a mystery. It's something that was, uh, you know, brought to my notice with an article I read from Harish Damodra. He says, the farm law mystery. What made center change its approach from incentivizing states, which is February this year, to forcing down reforms in June. In November 2019, the 15th Finance Commission submitted its interim report, wherein it proposed special performance-based incentives to states and, and that carried out agriculture sector reforms. We recommend that state governments take preparatory action by securing the passage of these bills in, in their respective legislatures in 2021, to become eligible to avail the grants awarded by us from 2021-22 onwards. Cut to June 5th, which was when the Narendra Modi government promulgated the Farmers Produce Trade and Commerce Ordinance and the Farmers Empowerment Agreement on Price Assurances and Farm Services Ordinance, apart from the Third Essential Commodities Act. The mystery question what happened between February and June for the Modi government to discard its earlier plan of incentive, incentivizing, encouraging states in favor of the so-called constitutional route of forcing reform via central legislation, which destroyed all forms of federalism, which destroyed all forms of democratic norm, which should have been discussed. So question is why? Why the hurry? Obviously, a lot of people are thinking this has been done under, you know, the, the pressure of Reliance and Adani, etc. But hey, Reliance and Adani, as they're coming out and telling you, and uh, Amazon, they're anyway buying products uh, from the farmers. And, and the farmers, the, for the funny part is, have always had the opportunity to sell outside the Mondays. So the question is, why this sudden move, just like demonetizing? Well, I've got to I kind of connect the dots and link the two because of what I read with Gene Dress. He says Dram drama at the farm gate. He says, for starters, the claim that farmers were not free to sell outside APMC Mondays until now is incorrect. As information scholars have pointed out, the bulk of agriculture marketing, in fact, takes place outside APMC markets Mondays. It is true that in the case of specific commodities and areas such as wheat and rice in Punjab, most of the marketing goes through APMC Mondays. But that is because farmers get a good price there. The minimum support price MSP, the minimum, it is the wholesale traders, not the farmers or intermediaries who are restricted from trading outside APMC Mondays under some state APMC Act. Note Punjab and Haryana. And I'll tell you why. An odd framework, this is an odd framework where APMC Mondays will be regulated by the state governments and other area by central government. Okay, this is the important part. Indeed, the act gives sweeping powers to central government to regulate trade in the so-called trade area that is outside the APMC Mondays. In the new regime, the Mondays may find it harder to survive, to compete with trade areas, they may have to reduce their fees. A reduction in inflated fees would not be a bad thing. But beyond that, reduced fees will make it harder for Mondays to provide public infrastructure and facilities. Now, why do I point out Punjab? And why do I point out the central control? Hey, folks, you remember demonetization. It achieved none of its objectives. Terrorism, black money, uh, uh, fraud money, nothing, right? Almost 100% plus has been deposited back into bank. And what did it really hurt? It really turned the tide against the opposition in the UP elections. I, based on what, what, what's been happening with the governor calling, I mean, breaking all norms and going straight to the secretary and the DGP asking about those few reliance towers that are being damaged. For God's sake, reliance towers that are being damaged, right? Or Piyush Goel stopping trains. 
This is about the political economy of Punjab. Punjab and Haryana together garner 80,000 crores, folks. If the central takes control of this, there is the funding for the upcoming Punjab elections is in jeopardy. So I connect the dots here. I don't know how many people see it that way. The timing has got nothing to do with anything. It's just a political opportune movement to try and push Punjab politics out of the safe net that they are currently in and towards the ruling party. So here, yeah, reports, as I said, suggesting, well, I mean, basically saying what happened. Farm talks fail again. Center says no repeal. Indian Express goes on further. Talks inconclusive. Farmers insist on repeal. Government for clause-wise discussion. This clause-wise discussion is actually basically the psalm a bit of Chanakya, trying to to kind of weigh the the way the the farmers are. I don't think they're going anywhere, right? Now, what else is happening? After Adani's RIL seeks to placate farmers, he says, "With you, <laughs> Bani should get off his high horse and say, get on to the farms, man." Then what's happening? Daughters of farmers on tractors headed for Delhi from Haryana. Hey, this is going to be a new one. This is going to be interesting too. Picked Republic Day as it represents supremacy of people's union. So these guys are going to have a Republic Day parade of the farmers. And why not? I think it's kind of very interesting. In the Haryana borders, or Haryana always, I mean, I, I guess, what's his name? Uh, the, 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 the chief minister is a fair lightweight in this pro in process. Day after clash, uneasy calm, protesters say 10 to 15 injured. You know, neither the Haryana we jarred, right? No other Rajasthani jarred. No other Punjabi jut or jat or UP jat is going to give in to any kinds of shenanigans from this government, I think. That's important for this government to rule. Right? And what does Aruna Rai write? And I think this is something that we should all take to heart. All citizens should stand with the protesting farmers. At stake is India's food sufficiency and sovereignty. In a, I mean, it, it's not really exaggerated. If you dig deep into it, these reforms are necessary. However, there's a particular way to do these reforms, right? They, they, you know, it's not like what Rajnath said. Rajnath had said, says, basically Rajnath Singh says, says that first do it. If it doesn't work, we'll change it. Hey, that's not how you introduce reforms. Says you don't want to do a GST again. You don't want to be a demonetizing. First you do trial runs and then you insu in, 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 institute it, right? I, Rajnath Singh has got it upside down. And, and what does Arunan Roy say? Bihar did away with APMC in 2006. What do we have now? Bihari farmers coming as workers to Punjab. We have the APMC and you see none of us going to behalf of work, do you? And of course, Parnagriya is saying, is, oh man, this, this, is, this, is, this is not a, a, a comparing oranges to oranges or apples to apples because the reforms in Bihar have started far longer, started from a law, uh, far later and they from a, a much lower income. But that's not true at all. That's, that's hogwash. And as, as, as Atul Thakur has, Bihar junk APMC Act in 06, but it hasn't benefited farmers at all. Open markets haven't resulted in higher prices. Data show that says in Bihar, in the nine harvest seasons between 80, 98, 99 and 2016, 70, only one saw prices nearly on par with MSP. While in Punjab, in the last so many years, only one saw prices below the MSP. And that's the goddamn difference between MSP. And maybe MSP is not right, but you've got to figure out an alternative because at the end of the day, it is risk mitigation and it is security. This particular if the agriculture has, has no other tools that your regular business has. There are no ways they can, they, they, they can deal with. Everything is absolutely driven by nature in this particular case, right? And what does Manjit S. Kang writes? MSP ain't broke, don't fix it. He says to encourage farmers to grow high value crops such as vegetables and fruits, the government should set up adequate cold chain infrastructure so that the perishable produce can be kept longer and sold at an appropriate time. The farmers paying powers must be improved so that they do not have to sell at their products immediately after harvest. He says, MSP has been working just fine since 1960. That There, there is a saying, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, folks. Folks, the other constituency in this agriculture debacle that is set to lose big time, as have the labor, uh, the laborers uh, in Bihar, agricultural laborers, is what's what is this article's rights was quieter but still present. Landless laborers say have much to lose. 
this is another constituency that we've all this has almost forgotten, right? But yes, like I said, Arvind Panagriya sitting in Columbia University in the United States uh, comes up with this theory. Corporates won't drive out Mondays. They instead help expand markets. Critics compare the poverty of Bihari farmer to the prosperity of Punjab farmers to argue that APMC reform hurt Bihar. Bihari farmers are poorer despite faster agricultural growth in recent years because they started out far poorer. So firstly, he is always going to be concerned about growth, 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 growth. As I, like I said, that is absolutely the wrong tool to catch on. Growth is not going to help the farmer. Productivity is. Growth is just the wrong thing. You can keep having growth year after year, but it's doing nothing to the actual income of the farmer. And when he says that 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 uh, they will not uh, uh, they will not uh, what do you say uh, drive out Mondays, as God is his witness, as global witness, of course they will. And the world and where he lives has had examples of the WalMarts and the whatever globally. They have really not done anything to enhance the farmer because even till now, humongous amounts of subsidies are paid to the farmer. Yes, let's say what he sees. Uh, this is a good one. Christopher Jeffrelot and Hemel Thanker write a safety net for farmers. Why should Indian agriculture be liberalized when in most countries governments subsidize it? And this is something that Arvind Panagriya sitting in the in the cradle of capitalism is is not telling you folks. It says Indian farmers in particular worry that farm bill may clear the way for giant Indian companies. When Akali Dal leader Harsimrat Kaur Badal resigned from the Narendra Modi government, she said citing a farmer from Punjab, Jio came in, they gave free phones. When everyone bought those phones and got dependent on those phones, the competition was wiped out and Jio jacked up the rates. This is exactly what the corporates are going to going to do with agriculture. That gets it. So why should agriculture be liberalized in the first place when in the most countries government subsidize the sector? In the US, the agriculture sector is expected to receive 46 billion in federal subsidies this year. The accounts for, that accounts for about 40% of the total farm income. And if it's not for the subsidies, the US farm's income was poised to decline in 2020, according to the report in New York Times. Similarly, the European Union Common Agriculture Policy spending has averaged 54 billion euros, folks. And what does Anil Padmanabhan write? Missing neglect for intention. Not only is agriculture the single largest employer, with nearly one in two of the Indian workers employed in the sector, it is also the backbone of consumer demand. This is what you have to remember, right? Every time the economy is in trouble like this, like, oh, oh, oh rural demand will drive it up. Rural demand will demand. Now, if you kill the damn rural goose that lays the golden egg, what next, man? It can be... It can be the much desired force multiplier, not only will it facilitate sustainable growth, but it will also alleviate poverty. It, so fixing the crisis is more than just resolving a vexing political problem. And what does Kaushik Basu and Nirvakar Singh write? Agriculture law needs reform, but not at the expense of the small farmer. Both of us have argued in the past that India's farm laws are anti antiquated, that the APMC acts need, need, need reform, and the overall the agriculture sector needs to be reformed. However, the world over farmers receive subsidies and protection to dismantle much of the government's marketing structure without concomitant risk mitigation support is to further disadvantage Indian farmers folks. And what do we have? Nikhit Kumar Agarwal and Richa Kumar right? And this is what is important, right? And this is the this is what, what I read when I say, you know, one of the things this is do. The third point relates to the second. Naturally grown products are variable in color, texture, and event, even taste. And our food consumption practices have thrived on these variations, right? Say tomato chutney for uh, rasam is different from the other chutneys. Right? Across the world, and especially in the US, the push for standardized and uniform quality of produce by agribusiness has led to major transformation in the farm supply chains. In the process, farmers have been pushed towards growing monocultures of few crops and varieties that their attendant toxicity and risk and consumer preferences has been transferred. So, so basically, we lose the diversity of all our produce, folks. Do we really want that? Absolutely not. Jai Hind.